Okay, this is how I connect my phone to the bike. Number one, this is the phone unlocked. That's the phone locked. That's the phone unlocked. I plug it into the bike. You can actually plug it into the bike before or after you started it. I tend to do it before. Hold on a second. Okay, now. As you can see down, it's loading, it's giving you Bluetooth features. I tend to be putting my gloves on while this is happening because it does take a few seconds. Eventually you will see these symbols change showing phone status, battery status and signal status. When you see the radio come up, You'll notice, because my phone is on the dash, BRP comes up and then the phone goes dark. The reason you're not hearing any music is that I've got the music coming through the headset, which I don't have on. Now you can hit the button on the back, and I have it set up so that when I go into BRP Connect, it instantly opens the Music's app so that I can start playing music. Push the joystick all the way in and hold it, and you get your apps. These are the apps that I use the most. I don't use Genius as much. Fobo 2 should be out soon. AccuWeather just tells me what I already know. These two are tracking apps similar to Rever. I've not really used them yet. This one here is brand new. I haven't opened it yet, so we're going to open it now. I push in to select, and I hit start, and the phone tells me that I need to give it permission. So I say open, and now it's opened that. It'll go black, and the phone will go black, but now Whenever you start a new app, that's what's going to need to be done. When it comes to the GPS apps, you're going to need to give it permission, and you're also going to have to pay a vehicle connectivity fee in order for it to work in the vehicle. I remember helping someone else where they could see the route in the phone, but when they connected it to the dash, they couldn't see the route in the dash and we found that you have to set the permissions. If you need that information, I can go into that later. Right now, we're just doing... I like Sigic. Sigic? Sigic? It really tells you and shows you and it's easier to see. Go to menu. Some, most of the time, I already have a route selected. But if not, I can go here, click the joystick down, navigate to address points of interest. You can already have a route selected. You can already have a route that's favorite. You can go, I don't know, just pick that one, I guess. While I'm typing. You can actually type. Now what I did just there was I moved the joystick to the left and held it there and it backed out of that step. So now I can go down and choose and I hit drive to and then start. When you go to menu, push in, use the joystick to select route. Push the joystick down a couple times, you can cancel the route. What I don't find is when you're moving and you want to start your music, you actually have to stop. 
It won't let you go through all this. It will literally say you need to stop first. But when you're in the GPS app, you can go through and type in something while you're going down the road at 50 miles an hour. For some reason, they allow that to happen. Now we're gonna go out, push the joystick in. You're now into your settings. This is where you go normally to reset your trip and total mi gas mileage. When you're in one of these two tabs, A and B, you can clear it. Now I'm getting a phone call. Why am I getting a phone call? I don't need a phone call. Telemarketers can take a hike. But while you're in these, if you push the joystick down and hold it, you will clear these numbers. If you push the joystick and hold it up, basically, now I see my trip meter. But if you go back to total and push the joystick up, I now see my total miles. Push the joystick in, push the joystick down, push the joystick to the right, then down, about. You can see the version 20.8. The first one was not that great. The second and third ones were a bit better. This one is actually working quite well. I don't really expect to see any updates other than new apps on the phone. Now I move the joystick to the left. You can get your fault codes. I don't have any you can choose what language you want. You can adjust the display. Sometimes people have found their display like this. You're not going to be able to see the GPS maps very well, so I just leave it right where it is. Bluetooth, this is where you pair your phone and your helmets. You put the helmet and phone in pairing mode the he headset have to be put in pairing mode as if you're pairing to a phone because you are in a way you're just going through the bike you don't really want to pair the headset headset to the phone you if you do you want to remove it it won't work being paired to the headset as well as to the bike and then the headset you can adjust the clock. If you go in here, you can go to configuration. You can go audio out. This is only with the 20.8 version, but you can have audio in speakers or helmets. You can't have music in helmets and audio, GPS and speakers. You can either have it all in one or all in the other. You can adjust other parts of your music and choose to listen to auxiliary music if you want to. Then of course there's the phone, connect the headset, I haven't got the headset on, and then this just pushes you back it, the same as the switch does. If you need any more help, let me know.